And now, please welcome Lamon Eglintals. First impressions count. It could be like a party. It could be a lot of fireworks. You could have an impression that everything is a celebration. The next impression could be that everything is golden. Everything is beautiful. Everything is grand. Another impression you might get would be everything is very abstract, very unusual, all these geometric patterns and shapes, and what on earth is it? Another impression could be very tranquil, very relaxing, very chilled out as you spend time up on the beach. Another impression you might get could be one of patriotism, of your nation, of your country. What is it all about? First impressions make a big impression on someone else, and they really do count. What is the first impressions as we read the Bible? The first verses, I've been told, I've been instructed many times, the first words are very important. God's first words to man says this, be fruitful and multiply. We can take that many different ways, and we can think of many different aspects there. But for some of us here, that will mean something, only half of us though, it will mean to be a father, to have children, and that there's a father that comes you, your new role as a father. I am very privileged and very lucky, very honoured that I have had a great father who's loved me, who's cared for me, who do anything for me. And that is a great benefit and a great impression on my life. But that's not the case for everyone in this world. There is someone who had a look at all those who are vocally opposed to God and try to figure out what is a unifying theme of them. And a person named Paul Witz has written a book called Faith of the Fatherless, The Psychology of Atheism. What makes someone an atheist? What is it about them that would make someone more likely to disbelieve in God than someone else? He came up with these suggestions and conclusions. That just as I was standing up there and I was in front of a projector, Nothing at all changed about me. I was exactly the same person. But you had a different image of me with different pictures, be it fireworks or beach scenes or Ayers Rock. Well, it's a similar sort of thing that happens for many people in their first parts of life. What is the impression we get from our own fathers? He looked at and he gave these basic conclusions, that most atheists had what he would define as either a weak father who wasn't de deserving of respect. He would have an absent father that either died or neglect or left or abandoned them. And that there was a lot of atheists who also had an abusive father in one way or form. Going through some examples of famous atheists, this one, Sigmund Freud, we'll use him as an, the first example. He developed this theory called projection theory. Well, how does it apply if someone disbelieves in God? Are they projecting their feelings of their own father onto God? It's very easy for me to see a picture of a loving, kind, caring, compassionate father in heaven when I have that here on earth. But those who don't have that picture and concept can find it really difficult to relate to God that way. A little bit about Freud. His father he found very weak. If you knew Freud, he was one of the most intellectually challenging people that would stand up and fight anyone on, any, on his beliefs. But his father was not like that at all. In the face of a widespread anti-Semitism, his father he thought as weak, as very passive and enabling in that culture. He didn't respect his father at all. Nitsky, who famously proclaimed, God is dead. Well, what about his own father? His father died when he was four years old, and he hardly knew him. Another famous atheist, an American lady, Madeleine O'Hare. What happened in her life, hasn't really spoken too much on when she was alive, but she did go out to try to kill her own father which, with a butcher's knife. It was a very tumultuous relationship. And a well-known psychologist named Albert Ellis, who has published many, many books, is wide, widely respected in psychological circles, 
and he is the father of cognitive therapy, I believe. His father died when he was 12 years old. Another um, well-known atheist was Anthony Flew. When he was drunk at a party once, he was on the floor, hitting the floor, shouting out, I hate my father. I hate my father. There's a, a very prominent atheist of this time who wrote about a book called Religion for Atheists, looking at the common aspects of what can atheists learn about religion in a positive way. His name is Alain de Botton. And he's probably one that you'd say is a more kind and gracious and more compassionate and compared to some of the other more militant atheists. And he, this is his story. He was brought up in Zurich, in Switzerland. His father was um, Jewish, but they weren't particularly of a believing family. When he was there, his father became very successful. He ran an international bank, and he became the head of his own investment firm. But this is what Alain de Dupont describes his father as, a cruel tyrant. He more or less ignored my existence. It was as though he actually did not see me. He was dismissive of everything I achieved. This well-known author who's published many books now, he says this, the books were an attempt to connect with him, to connect with his own father. We have the importance of a father in someone's life. And we look and we think, what is the future going to hold? Just this week, there's a very well-respected well report published predicting what will be happening in 50 or 100 years' time in the world's religious population. Christianity, they believe, will stay about the same. It will gain millions and millions of converts. Out of all the religions, Christianity is converting more. But on the other side, Christianity is losing more people. And we think and we challenge that. Is that because of faith? Oh, sorry. Is that because they don't like Jesus? Not really. Is it because of education? Is it because of challenges of science? These can come into play. But one of the biggest factors is there is a death of fathership in our society. And our children are often raised without knowing a loving father, a father that cares for them. First words are important, but also last words. And as we come to the Bible and we look in the last words of the Old Testament, this is the last verse. It says, He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, so that I will not come and strike the land with a curse. Remember, first impressions count. Remember our fathers. To love our own fathers, and most of all, to love our heavenly father as well. To help you understand God's word in a whole new way, go to goodnewsunlimited.com. You can sign up there to get your free devotional delivered to you each day. been paid for by the partners and friends of Good News Unlimited. Word spreads fast.